Okay, just back there is the entrance to uh, Stockland Aura development, which is, Aura is the name for Caloundra South, a priority development area that the developer has named it. And as you can see here, as we come in, the very entrance of it has some interesting native vegetation that they've retained or uh, may not even be on their property. And it's interesting to, I've never been up this road, so we'll see what we find here. It's the new arterial road that will connect uh, to the uh, large development. You can see here that there has been some fragmentation of the land already, uh, but uh, they're trying to put other things in along this corridor. Uh, in terms of transport, you can see a bikeway on the right hand side. On the left we've got a wildlife fence to, to try and stop uh, animals moving out onto the road. Uh, so you can see that the way this has been designed is, is looking at minimising the impact on uh, resources in the landscape. There's a smaller wire fence, it's hard to see. Now here we're crossing a waterway and my bet is that there will be an underpass there over the, at this bridge that we're passing. Uh, there will be some sort of underpa uh, underpass, a ledge for animals to move under the road along the watercourse and that's a way to minimise uh, some of the fragmentation caused by this road infrastructure. Here we go, here's a, a suburb going in. This will be uh, the first suburb uh, that's going in for this, you know, huge, huge urban development. I might just pull into the left and see what we can find. You can see that uh, a whole range of infrastructure goes in very early with the way they're planning uh, these developments. Uh, look, it needs to be planted out. Uh, because environmental regulations will uh, call for uh, control of erosion into the into the waterways. Uh, so that's what uh, some of this is for. Some of it, of course, is to give people a glimpse of, uh, of what they might be buying if they buy in early. Okay, not too much to see here yet. Uh, we'll just uh, record for a tiny bit longer and see what we can see. Up here, look at this on the left. A green city, six star awarded world leading community. So you can see that uh, part of the way this is being sold is it's uh, not just a you know a cheap place to live further out of the city, uh, but it's an environmental uh, you know, it's an environmental place to live and that's part of what's drawing people to this area. Uh, close to the Sunshine Coast, Caloundra is really just around the corner from here. I was hoping to see some sort of water sensitive urban design. Here we go. So here we have uh, some sort of a retention basin or a rain garden, a sunken garden, which catches the runoff in the storms like yesterday uh, and filters it into the table. You can see into the water table rather than straight into uh, stormwater. Uh, you can see that the drains have been especially designed with this in mind. And so again, this is one of the innovations or the, the new sort of designs that are coming out now to minimise the cost in terms of uh, pipes that we have to build, uh, but also the impact on the water table that large scale developments have and on the hydrology of the area. We will speak about this a, a little bit more later in um, in the semester but a big thing to think about here is what they call green infrastructure so once we have enough of these sort of uh, vegetated 
uh, facilities, green green infrastructure, green um, green uh, water infrastructure in place. Uh, in some parts of the world, they're now starting to uh, put a value on these things. So, in, just as we do with our uh, with our grey water, with our stormwater systems, where we need to. I keep track of them as a capital asset and how much they're worth and how much it costs to maintain them. Similarly, with these green infrastructure systems, uh, we're able to do uh, accounting around that and to consider these things as these facilities as part of the water infrastructure of the city, of urban areas. And it's a very interesting development because it's a recognition uh, in very practical ways of ecosystem services. It's, uh, it's about saying, well, what is the environment giving us uh, for free, or almost for free, uh, in terms of green infrastructure? It's cheap, it's cheaper than building pipes, but it is also important to keep track of what these facilities are worth and what it means to maintain them. You can see that this one is vegetated in the bottom it's turfed uh, so that's going to need maintenance that that whole uh, system is going to silt up over time and it's it's going to be need to be maintained uh, it's it's just not true to say that these sort of approaches are free uh, they're definitely if we were to value them um, in terms of uh, their costs uh, we can value them against uh, grey, what they call grey uh, infrastructure, um, so stormwater pipes, etc. We can use them as the base case, as the norm, and then we can say, well, what would the difference be? Uh, what would be the, uh, yeah, what, what would the difference be in terms of cost benefit uh, if we put in these uh, green infrastructure as well? Okay, this has been a bit rambling, I'm sorry, uh, but some interesting stuff to look at here.